Welcome back to Red's Roundup. In this video, I want to talk about position sizing. Uh, from Warren Buffett to venture capitalists, they all use the same type of thinking to come up with their ideal position sizing. And the best investors, their position sizing actually increases their returns. So we're going to take a look at that. Um, starting out, here we're going to look at a few Warren Buffett quotes. Number one, diversification is protection against ignorance. It makes little sense if you know what you are doing. We're going to put a few of these quotes together to to synthesize them to come up with his investing uh, poor position sizing. Next one, opportunities come in frequently. When it rains gold, put out the bucket, not the thimble. So that basically means when when you have massive opportunities, you need to take uh, take advantage of those. Um, lay out a lot of money for the ideal investment, not just put a few bucks here or there. You need to put a lot in. Third, risk comes from not knowing what you are doing. So this is pretty much saying if you know what you're doing, you can safely bet very heavily. And it doesn't come from not being diversified. So let's take a look at something called the Kelly Criterion. Uh, I found this out recently. Uh, I heard of this online from an article, and I got really interested in it. And basically what it is is a way for a better, someone who's gambling, to know how much they should bet on any given uh, any given odds. And given that, and let's look, take a look at the equation here. Sorry, I'm fumbling over my words. We have the Kelly percentage, which is the percentage of your money or your portfolio or your bankroll, if you're gambling, that you should put into any position. And so we see here it's the winning probability minus one minus the winning probability divided by R. And there are a few other iterations of this equation. They all come back to the same thing. So basically what it means is that you want to divide your edge divided by the odds of winning. And, and that's basically what it means. So let's see here. What's this graph have to do with the Kelly criterion? So you see where the big K is at the bottom. That is where you want to bet ideally for the highest possible uh, returns over time on average. So if we see here conservative, that's like half Kelly. And uh, double Kelly, you're going to be making zero. And any more than double Kelly, you're, you're likely going to be blowing up your portfolio. So most investors, they stick to the Kelly or less. So Kelly betting is pretty much what you would do if you have extreme conviction in your inputs into the equation. And this equation, of course, is not fully used, meaning that you, you aren't going to see investors plugging in numbers to this equation to figure out how much they should position size. It's going to be more of a mental exercise. And we as newer investors, most of us, are going to benefit from looking at this equation and how we can use that as a mental exercise to help us with position sizing to figure out what type of investor we are. So now we're going to be looking at this spreadsheet that I made that's going to help us look at what it means to Kelly Bet and what different odds will do to your position size. So let's take a look at a Warren Buffett value style investing. Sorry about that, I misspelled it. Um, Warren Buffett value style investing where he has fairly high conviction. And you even hear him say sometimes, if you're right six times out of 10, uh, that, that's a pretty good investing record uh, for a value investor. And Peter Lynch has said that as well. Um, those are two guys that I think it's pretty fair to say they've, they know what they're doing. Written a number of books and their returns speak for themselves. So the payout, if you know what you're doing, say six times out of 10, and your payout is a 2x, so the, the stock price goes up two times, you should position size that as 40% of your portfolio. So if, if you do that twice, that's like around two and a half positions. And you will see that this is generally how they size their biggest position. Now it decreases because of other things come into the equation like opportunity costs, how much do you think you're gonna make from each investment. But if all your bets are like this, you'll be making about two and a half bets. But this, again, I want to emphasize, this is a very low level way of thinking about it. This is not any high math, but it's going to help us gain the concepts 
to move forward into understanding our own position sizing even better. So a Warren Buffett type investor who has pretty high conviction and his payout is is a double, he's going to go in at, uh, he's going to have like two and a half positions. Well, if we look at a venture capitalist and those guys uh, who are the people in Silicon Valley and around the world that invest in startup companies mostly, their win percentage is going to be very low. They're going to win only about 2% of the time or so, uh, plus or minus a few, but their payout is going to be huge. So their payout might be 500 to 1. So like the people who invested in Uber, they're like 5,000 or something, massive returns. But so let's say that their their average win is about 500 to 1 and they win 2% of the time. Their position sizing is going to be 2% of their portfolio. And that's going to mean that they're going to have about 55 positions, plus or minus a few here or there. Remember, this is just conceptual. So, And that's what we see in the real world. The best venture capital funds actually have around 55 positions, plus or minus a few, between 30, 55, 100, somewhere in there. And that's very different than what Warren Buffett did, especially in his earlier partnership days in the 60s and the 50s. He was investing very high concentration. At any given time, one position could be up to 75% of his portfolio. Even now, today, we see that Apple is over 40% of his portfolio in Berkshire Hathaway. So that, that's pretty interesting just to look at the, the, the very big differences in number of positions you could have while still being an effective investor. So there really is wide-ranging styles uh, as an investor. If you're going to be more of a growth investor, maybe in, you have a smaller win percentage but a larger payout, but between venture capital and Warren Buffett, you might be between 55 and 2. There's, there's a massive range of position sizing that will be effective if you're correct about the win percentage and the payout. But now let's take a look at something even more interesting, which is how you could create a value investing portfolio using venture capital-like position sizes. This is going to be pretty crazy to try and create, but I think we can do it. Let's take a look here, optionsprofitcalculator.com. If you've watched the channel for a while, you've seen them before. Great website. Highly recommend them if you want to understand options better and what your payout and what your loss would be on a given option strategy. Um, highly recommend. So in this first situation, we're going to try and figure out how we can create, uh, this is Core, Core Energy uh, Infrastructure Trust. They are an, uh, an oil pipeline REIT, real estate investment trust, pretty small cap. Uh, I bought the call, or in this scenario, you buy the call on the 18th of June, 2021. So pretty far out, but not super far out at $10. And the stock is at seven. So if we were to do that, we would see this type of payout structure. So we see our break even price is around $11. And over that you make profit. And you can see here that but if, if the stock does not go up over that price, uh, you lose money. And if it stays the same, you lose all of your money. But if it goes up, say, to $15 a share, you get 387%, whereas the stock itself would have only gone up 113%. So you're creating a massive upside while also creating a pretty big downside if you're wrong. Um, we can see that here. Let's say, let's say we, make, we make the win percentage... Uh, Let's just carry this out here. Let's make the win percentage. Let's say you win, let's say you win 5% of the time. And if you're right, you make, no, not, not 5%. I think I can, I could do a little bit better. Let's say 25% of the time, not quite as much as if you're being winning six out of 10, because you're really, you're really limiting your, your, uh, or not limiting, but expanding your downside to include, even if the stock goes up 40%, you're still out 100%. So let's say you just win 25% of the time, but if you win, you get uh, you, you 5x your money. You're going to be putting 10% of your money in each of the positions. So you're going to be having around 10 positions. So that's going to be between a Buffett-style value and a venture capital 
And if we go back to the to that chart I showed you, we could even half Kelly. So if you're not very comfortable with this because, okay, maybe I don't know what I'm doing. I don't want to lose all of my money. Okay, then you go back to the drawing board and say, I'm going to half Kelly bet and see where that gets me. And I think you're going to do pretty well. It might not be the most, but it's going to be a lot safer than if you did something else. So let's take a look at the, the, a few other ones. I actually own this option. I, I bought it when Core was much lower. I bought it for $0.50. Cents. So that, that's been good for me. Um, Core Civic. This is the prison REIT, which is unreading, uh, if you will, changing to a S Corp, I believe. It's either an S or a C. I can't remember exactly. Sorry about that. But I should. Uh, I also own this one. I bought it at around a dollar. So that's done pretty well. Um, I own the Strike so pretty the furthest dated one, so this is many years, I think they have a pretty good chance of getting back up to where they were. Let's take a look at this, actually, CXW, uh, because I think you're, you're going to be impressed by, let's just look at the five-year chart. Okay, so they were back uh, after the election. This is when Trump won, boom, stock spiked all the way up to 35. I think it's pretty realistic that we've hit the bottom at the election, uh, like we see here, it hit the bottom and spiked back up. I don't think it'll actually spike back up, but I think it's likely to go up. And let's just say it, it hits a conservative price target of 20 or something. That's not exactly conservative, but let's just say it goes to 20. That's over 300%. And if it goes to $20 a share even and even sooner, that's even closer to 400%. So this is looking like a pretty pretty good trade considering I got in at a much better price. Another one I've looked at is uh, QRTEA, Curate Retail. I've talked about that one a little bit. I would take a look at this. There are a few smart people. I found this one on Twitter. Someone was talking about it on Twitter. Uh, recommend this one. I don't own an option on this. I will be upfront, but I, I have an order in, but it did not get filled. So that was a little bit sad. Um, and this is a very small percentage of my portfolio. Like I said, I'm not even full Kelly betting. I'm I'm probably less than that because I'm not actually super comfortable with this win percentage. So like let's just say we take the win percentage down to 15. Oh, not 15 because that's even less. Let's just say it's 20. You're going to be betting 4%, so that's that's not very much uh of your portfolio and I'm I'm not even at that. So last one last idea is using a credit spread on an option because all these options if we look here they had very uh that's not super low implied volatility let's just take a lower one like a an applied volatility of 67 which is pretty low which means that the premium that you're going to be paying for that option so if you're paying a high premium that's not a good thing if you're buying but it's a good thing if you're selling so let's take a look at the, these options here it's it's not a great example because it's still not very high but if if we go to a stock like Sorry about that. We're going to just go back to ACMR and look at that. Uh, the implied volatility is 77, so it's just a little bit higher, but it, it still serves the same point, uh, being that if you select some long-dated option, because then you're more likely to guess correctly on the stock market movement, because you don't want to get into speculation territory where it's short-term speculation. I don't really want to do that, but uh, if we see here that let's just say the stock price stays the same and with this credit spread where you sell a put and then buy a put, you're collecting that premium difference, you're going to have a upside of 100%, a little over 100%, even if the stock stays the same. So let's say that you're right 50% of the time, this is going to be a good uh, strategy. And let's say you, you're somewhere in here. Anyways, this is if you want to limit your upside and capture more of that downside potential. Because if we see here on, on this, you have you have uh, limited upside, so you're always going to be at that 103%. Even if it goes up uh, 200%, you still get that 100%. But even if it goes down 10%, you're still up 35%. And if we compare that to the, the, the core civic option, this is way different because of that premium you actually are, uh, you're, you're not making money if the stock stays the same, but you have potential for huge upside. 